All right, how is everyone doing? I am Rich Cholenza, and thanks for tuning into the Rich Cholenza Show. WTF are you talking about? I actually just walked out of LA Fitness, my gym, and I was thinking about some things regarding a podcast I did yesterday with my girlfriend, Ria. And uh, we did two podcasts. Uh, one was based on where where people live. Um, are they where they belong? It's basically what that was about. If you get a chance, I already posted that. That's episode number 71. Um, yeah, and then we did another one which I haven't posted yet regarding health insurance or health care. And the premise was um, if people took care of themselves as if they didn't have health care was basically the premise of that podcast, which I found quite interesting uh, as a subject because I, I didn't get a lot of things out that I wanted to say. We were kind of rushed and then her daughter came home and then we had to quit the podcast but there were some things that I wanted to go through and I wanted to do this personally as well. And um, so one of the things um, I wanted to say regarding this podcast is if people took care of themselves as if they didn't even have health insurance or health care or a health provider, however you want to say it. Um, if they had that mindset, I could assure you most people would live a much, I think, healthier life. But because they do have health insurance... Uh, or healthcare, that they kind of let themselves go a lot of times because they know they could go to the doctor and a lot of times um, they could take meds, they could, uh, all, whatever it is, they think they could get cured. It could be an operation, whatever the case may be. But if you had the mindset that nobody else can heal you, hypothetically, that you can only internally heal yourself, is what I should be saying, I think most people would be a lot better off. Now, do not get confused and say, or say don't get confused by me saying this everyone should have health care <laughs> and uh and i'm going to kind of give you an insight on kind of what i went through before regarding health care having health insurance which really aggravate me but i'll get into that in a little bit but i don't want people to get this misconstrued i want everybody to have health insurance i want everybody if they have any health condition any health problem to obviously you know get that taken care of um i have two daughters uh, one had a liver transplant. She was younger. My other daughter has diabetes one. So I do know there's somebody who really knows a lot about um, going through the system as far as what the expense, the aggravation of actually having health insurance and what it covers and doesn't cover. Uh, I, pr I fall under that umbrella. And, um, you know, I've spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't say this to get a pat on the back or to feel sorry for me regarding one of my daughters. And I would have spent a billion dollars, spend the rest of my life trying to keep my daughters healthy, obviously. But after a while, what happened to me, I realized, is I started to resent health care uh, in this country in the way, I shouldn't say the care, I, the way the hospitals and how everything was set up, I looked at it as a huge con. Because I think a lot of it is a con. I mean, literally, even when my daughter would be in the doctor. They would, or in the hospital, which the first year of her life, I think she spent more time in a hospital than out. So did I. And I think at times it was like $6,500 a day we broke it down to. Some of her operations ran well over a couple hundred thousand dollars. And she hit millions, like, you know, like a lot of people. And I think it's ridiculous to, pe to put people in certain situations. And I understand there's lawsuits and there's all these different things. But when you're my daughter, I think, also had like 27 different medicines, maybe even more at one time, which she needed the meds. But then all of a sudden, there, you know, my healthcare would say you could do this, but that's out of network. We'll cover this operation, but after that, she's here for another month. Sorry, we don't cover that because we only cover the operation. We don't cover her staying. Weird shit. We cover this type of meds, but not this. So we need $1,200. Uh, this is going to be, you know, after you're done, you get a bill for $80,000, $100,000. It it's, it's unbelievable. They destroy your credit and blah, blah, blah. But... On the other end, I wouldn't have been able to save my daughter's life without this care from these doctors, which I call angels. So, um, yeah. So, I'll just give you my input on something that I learned about myself. I don't know if you go through this or not. Um, and that is, so, about, you know, I fell on hard times around 2008, I think, like a lot of people. And I want to make sure my daughters obviously always had health care. My ex-wife as well. That's our number one priority is that our daughters are healthy. And then I couldn't afford insurance. And then I um, I was working for Nima Marcus. I think I had health insurance through there. And then I left. And then I started to actually valet park cars and run a valet parking service at Point Orlando and downtown Orlando. 
And a lot of people were like kind of shocked because when I was younger, I just made a lot of money and then I, my father sold his business and then, you know, this and that happened. And before you know it, you're in a situation that you never thought you'd be in, especially financially. And I didn't have health insurance. And what was funny is I was at the point where I resented paying for health insurance for myself, not my kids. I just thought it was a scam um, because I, I think I thought that one is I was extremely healthy and I think also I had the mindset that said, you know, when people a lot of times get health insurance, it's kind of a cop out on their health. Again, this is the way I think. That doesn't mean you have to think this way, which is, I'm sure a million people be like, you're nuts. But I realized like, I said, I'm not going to get health insurance, but what I'm going to do is take care of my body and get in better shape than I've ever been. And I've always lifted weights. So working within the valet, I went in at about 220 pounds. Then I was down to like 190, 195. I was shredded at like 40 years old or whatever I was. I might've been late thirties. I don't know. But my friends, everybody was shocked. I mean, I was shredded because we're running. We're in Florida. It's very hot. Started doing, we started like really getting very busy. It was like 40 of us. And I started to kind of run the front and I started to actually feel better. Now I always had health insurance because we always had it. And then I also kind of was, I knew I always had health insurance. Like, oh, if I, you know, my, fa- my, fa- my family on my father's side has heart disease. You know, my dad had a couple stints. My uncle had a couple quadruple bypasses, all these different type of things. And so I always would be like, oh, if I need that done, I'll need that done. And when I was heavier, I felt horrible. Even though I lifted heavy weights and I was always in the gym, I just did not feel good when I lost that weight. When I got around 190, I felt weak, but 195 felt beautiful for me. So to make a long story short, I, I, I think I convinced my mind that I don't really need health insurance and that when I had health insurance, I lived actually an, an unhealthier lifestyle. When I knew I didn't have health insurance, I made sure I was tight with everything. Like I really never was really a huge drinker, so I made sure I didn't drink that much anyways or drink at all. Um, I like Italian foods, but I backed up on my portions. At the time, I was dating a vegetarian, which made me crazy. But um, I started to learn different, you know, different foods and kind of break out than just all the foods I used to eat and learn a lot more about nutrition, incorporate a lot more cardio. And then I ended up moving to California with my cousin. And I never even told people I didn't have health insurance. And I told my closest friends couple of them and they were upset with me. They're like, are you out of your fucking mind? You go to the hospital, you're screwed. You're gonna, I'm like, you're screwed anyways. You know, that was my mindset. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I go in there, they're going to burn me either way. Well, they, you know, it's all this and that. I said, I get it. And almost as time went on, um, I actually just felt better. <laughs> Not a, and it was kind of interesting because then I started to travel a ton. More and more, and people are like, you got to have health insurance, Rich. If something happens to you on the road, you're driving, you're flying, or this or that. And I was just so against it. It was it was unbelievable. And believe me, it's not like I played it safe either because I go through these periods of my life, and I think maybe other people do too, where one minute I'm kind of babying myself. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I'm scared. I, I don't want to do that. And literally the next year, I'll be surfing where I know there's sharks in San Diego. I'm hiking and mountain biking with my cousin in pretty risky areas with mountain lions. I actually flipped over the handlebars, snapped three of my ribs. I I just thought I could self-heal myself, which I kind of did. Uh, I went to his chiropractor and he was kind of shocked at um, how I healed so quickly. First I went there and then he said, come back. And I came back and because I said, I'm not going to a doctor. And that's when my cousin, I think even found out. I, I don't even know if I told him I had health insurance. Uh, I didn't have it. I'm sorry. So what happened there was um, I started to obviously get older and know that I have to get health insurance, which I do now. But it was kind of an interesting perspective that I think if a lot of people looked at it this way. And, and here's the thing regarding a lot of men. I can't speak for women. I think two things happen with a lot of men. They are sick or they don't feel good and they're afraid to go to the hospital, even if they have insurance or not because they're afraid of what you know someone's going to tell them. Who knows what they got, Right. So they go for long periods of time and I forgot the stats, but a lot of men die because of that reason. They don't go to the hospital or they don't, you know, regulate themselves. Um, And then you have the guys that um, kind of go to the hospital all the time and they're lazy pieces of shit and they don't want to change. So they get obese. They don't take care of their bodies. They want to kind of blame everything else. Uh, If they're overweight, they're complaining about their knees. They don't want to lose weight. Their lower back. All these different things, they keep going to the hospital to kind of 
make them kind of fix it or give them some drugs or whatever they can, instead of just realizing you have to take care of your own health. If you had the mindset that nobody else can help you but yourself, I, I could assure you our country wouldn't be in the position it is, especially with obesity. Now, I come from Chicago, obesity, I think that is number one or two, maybe. It's us or Texas or one of them. I think it's the most obese place I know in North America, but I think maybe in, globally in the world uh, because of our diet. And I grew up on that diet. Um, and it's still some of the best comfort food. I think it is the best comfort food. And in about two days, I'm going to be going to Portillo's in Tampa because there's one here now. I live in Florida. But I grew up eating Portillo's. I'm related actually to the Bono Beefs. So I don't know if you know that franchise. Another beef sausage, you know, sandwich place. Very popular in Chicago. And we grew up with all different types. Of, I'm not going to start listing all our favorite places there. But... Yeah, I could see a lot of my friends now, too, as we're getting older, just neglecting their health. And that can include smoking, drinking, and all these different things. But some try to stay in shape. I think what I'm realizing, too, is when a lot of these guys are hitting their 50 mark with men, again, I'm not speaking of women, their sons hit the teenage years or older, and they're getting bigger and stronger than them, and they want to hold their own against their sons. They don't say that, but they do. And their kids look and getting in great shape, and then they realize how out of shape they are right? When they're kids, they're kids. They're playing baseball, playing basketball or whatever, football, whatever the case may be. They're kids. But when your son or even daughter start to get really fit, you're kind of looking at yourself like, holy shit, I'm getting old, right? Especially if you become a grandparent at a younger age. So uh, I've seen it go both ways or, you know, then, or you take on their own saying, holy shit, I'm an old man now. Who gives a shit? I'm just going to hang in a bar. I'm going to eat fanning foods. I'm just going to let myself kind of go. You don't mean to let yourself go. You just kind of do. But I just thought I would kind of follow up to that, you know, that podcast because I think sometimes um, I'm kind of more rude. When I was discussing it with her, I was kind of being nonchalant and trying to be very, I guess, formal. But I just had my own perspective on that and I didn't know how to get into it with her and it would have got too long. So that was just something I definitely wanted to get into with this podcast. I don't want to make it super long, but please, if, you, if you're getting older, um, for one is obviously get health care. Oh, that's a funny story. I didn't want to incorporate into this. I'm happy it jumped into my brain. So my cousin uh, needed a, uh, a transplant, a kidney transplant. So I matched, even though I was older. This only happened a few years ago, maybe a couple years ago. Uh, she's older and some other people went and they, um, they got, you know, they, they turned them down. So I know the process of donating and, you know, your organs and all these things because of what I went through with my daughter. So I said, I'll definitely, um, put me in. I definitely want to help her give her my kidney. She was excited. I was super excited. I went on a tangent to get in the best shape of my life. I didn't have health insurance actually at this time. I didn't let her know that or anybody because I was just so still aggravated with health insurance, whatever my own issues were. But I went on a real vengeance to get into the best shape of some, maybe of my life. I was like 47 or 48. I couldn't believe it. The shape I kind of got in for my age, really like just swimming everything. I was like a man on a mission. I only ate healthy foods. I even kind of gave up most of my Italian food, all that stuff. So I had to go into, I had to fly into Northwestern. They had to do all these studies on me and obviously take my blood six different times. I had to go do these tests. I think it was a couple days. Then when I was in Florida, but I was at Northwestern, they couldn't believe my age, which is, I'm not saying again, saying that to sound whatever. And they were like, I, we're shocked. How do you, you know, you're what age? And I said, I'm 47 or 48, whatever the hell I was. And they're like, this is, how did you stay in this shape for your whole, like, how did you keep in this type of shape for your whole life or whatever? I said, well, I started working out when I was like five years old at a local YMCA and I haven't stopped since I was 14. But I said, I, I didn't say this. I wanted to say to them, I lived as if I didn't have to depend on you. That's what I felt like telling the doctors. But sometimes when I, the way I think is very arrogant. Of course, I wouldn't say that to them. But I just said, you know, I, I, this is, um, I go through the same thing with my doctor, my doctor in Florida, who I just went back to after not seeing. And he's like, Rich, where did you go? You've been gone all this time. I didn't have health insurance. He's like, you haven't been here in 10 years. I said, oh, I was in California for like five or six. And then I was this and that. And he's like, oh, thank God. You're, you know, and we're, actually, I think he's younger than me. He always wants to know my workout stuff. I tell him I only take Flintstone vitamins. He doesn't believe me. I still think he thinks I did steroids in my youth. I didn't. I still think he takes... He thinks I take all these different supplements, which I don't. But the doctors at Northwestern were shocked at a lot of um, how I stayed in the condition I did at my age. Now, am I in that shape now? No, I'm in decent shape, but I'm nowhere near where I was there. And um, to make a long story short, things did not work out with me and my cousin. 
uh, regarding um, we had some issues um, with um, my family it just blood pressure situation um, with my mother's medical history she's had some my father so at my age too but she ended up getting a donor she's doing incredible and that's all we cared about and you know so it's kind of funny I'm talking about my health but still got rejected but one thing did happen I will tell you this if you're bigger and this kind of I don't know if this hurt or helped us it obviously it all worked out for her but everything was great at Northwestern I got great results and they said we want to do one more test and they, that was take my blood pressure for 24 hours because of I told them the backstory my mother and my father and everybody I said of course that's fine so they sent it and they said that day you can't move too much so I said you know what I'll do Christmas day so because I knew I would just sit around that whole day so they sent me a sleeve it's a machine with a sleeve like when you normally get a you know when you get your blood pressure taken and the problem was they sent me an ordinary one which my arms a lot bigger than that usually I use the one that's more obese because my arms are bigger than you know than that I could barely fit it on my arm. I was like, I was like, oh my God. And then I knew something was wrong because every, every like five minutes, it was like going, squeezing in and out. And they said, it's only supposed to do it like twice, two or three times max an hour. My arm was getting destroyed all night. So I sent back the results. I got rejected and my cousin was livid. I was kind of shocked too, but like I said, it all worked out for the better. So now fast forward, I went to my doctor right after that. I had, uh, I got health insurance. I said, let me go see my doctors. And I went and seen my dad's doctor. Again, the, doc the guy said, man, you're in a great shape. Unbelievable, this and that. And I said, when I went to my dad's specialist, I said, well, I just got rejected. I would like to know why. He's like, I have no idea why. So I said, oh, okay. So then I went to my doctor and I said, hey, this was the situation. I went in to donate and this and that. So they went to test me and they went to put the arm cup on and they couldn't get it on. They barely got it on. They tested it and they said, this is all screwed up. What am I doing? I got the wrong size. So they pulled it out and got the bigger arm pressure. And they're like, oh, thank God this worked. And I said to them, you know, when they tested me for 24 hours, they sent the other size to my arm. Would that have kind of screwed my arm, you know, because it didn't fit correctly. They're like, absolutely. What was interesting, I think happened is they didn't send me the right sleeve. If they probably would have sent me the right size sleeve that fit my arm, I probably would have ended up donating my kidney. Not for sure, but we did go back and forth and it looked like it was a go. So that was just an interesting perspective of um, something I just wanted to kind of bring up regarding what I went through um, with health. But there was something else I wanted to tie into that. And now I forgot it. It happens all the time. Um, Hmm. Interesting. All righty. That's all I really got for you today, but please take care of your health, uh, especially the guys and girls that are getting a little older and, uh, you want to be hopefully around for your kids. And I talk about this all the time to be in shape is actually easy to live out of shape is hard. And when I say get in shape, I think a lot of people think that, I mean, get to the gym, run for two miles, do a full, you know, kind of bodybuilding workout or, or swim 150 laps or run 10 miles. That's not what I'm saying. Just be in decent shape where you can kind of hold your own. That's all I've ever tried to really do. And I, I'm, I'm obviously I'm beyond that. I can hold my own. But even when I would go hypothetically with my cousin, with his friends to go say do a bike ride in San Diego, I can do it very easily. If you wanted to hike anywhere, I'm not a runner, but I can jog with you. But whatever you want to do, if you want to go play volleyball, I'll kick it in the ass with you. Like I said, if you want to go surfing and I'm not scared that day, then I'm not going to get bit by a shark. Who the fuck knows what my issue may be that day. And my own issues with heights and all these things. But I can kind of hold my own. And if you can get to a gym and, you know, just maybe two, three times a week and just take care of your body, maybe back up on a lot of, the, you know, a lot of foods that you know aren't healthy. Just do things in moderation, even your workouts. And I'm telling you, if you can, you know, get into a little better shape, even with your kids, you can experience life is, a, I should say your life just experiences are much healthier and easier. And I even went through that with my girlfriend because now she's at Disney and she hated the gym. But she wasn't, she was very thin, but she had no muscle mass. She was very weak. But now that she's in shape, like, I mean, she can go to Disney with her kids and kick them in the ass. Like, because she goes to the gym consistently. She, you know, she jogs, she stretches, she works out with weights. And she's like a different person. And she even talks about that. I think we talked about that on the podcast. She didn't realize how weak she was or out of shape she was. Like, she still ran and maybe did some dance. But when you get in just decent shape, nothing really totally kind of kicks your ass physically, if that makes sense. So even if going out dancing at night, if you're in decent shape, you know, the next day you're not going to be destroyed or so sore and you can kind of hold your own. 
And that's all I try to preach to people on my podcast or whatever. So I don't want people to get confused when I say get in shape or I'm not asking anybody to become a bodybuilder, uh, do, you know what I mean, marathons, decathlons. And I have friends in San Diego and all these people that do that. Um, we kind of go back and forth. They kind of like my body, but I do kind of more of a bodybuilding type thing because I'm more caught up in an image, I believe. And it's, a, it's an interesting thing. People always tell me, Rich, you know, you're still this or that. And I go, yeah, because I'm insecure. And I think a lot of people need to be honest about that. I want to look a certain way. The look means just as much as the health for me. So like if, if I, like I don't want a runner's body, nothing against runners. I don't want a bicycler's body. Uh, I don't want any of that. I want the body that I created because I want to have a certain foundation. It's kind of like almost a building that I built that I want to maintain. Um, it's not just about, I don't need to worry about how many miles I run. I don't judge it on that. I don't judge it on time either how fast I'm doing things a lot of times. Sometimes I will, don't get me wrong, but that's not my full gear, my, or I should say what I do. I kind of just want to do 40 laps in a pool a few days a week. I like to do a bodybuilding where I cover each body part. Still like a bodybuilder, like say chest and tries, you know, shoulders, buys, back traps, legs. I did legs today. I never skip legs, but um, and then I throw in other things in there as well. You know, obviously elliptical, treadmill, but I don't like to run. It jams my knees up for years. Obviously, I played so many sports and it also kind of my lower back starts to pinch a little bit. So I kind of want to do things that are fluent that make me feel healthier and better. And that's what I think a lot of people got to realize is all this is about is feeling better. Now, if you're not feeling better doing any exercise you're doing, and what the hell are you doing it for? If you had to beat yourself up to get there and beat yourself up to go through it and then beat yourself up when you're done, I, I, you got to find stuff you like, right? And I think overall, it'll just give you a, a, just a healthy perspective. And I'm telling you, when you get a little healthier, because I've been unhealthy, healthy. I say I, I was unhealthy and at a point of just overeating and things. And uh, when you just start to see little changes, um, it's definitely worth it. So... All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope some of this helped you. If not, sorry about that. If you disagree with a lot of things, I get that as well. Because I actually uh, would love for people to leave comments. I post this actually on my YouTube page. I post this on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So if you want to leave comments, please do so. And uh, I also have a Mastering Self-Confidence program where I kind of get into certain things regarding health and fitness as well. If you like that, along with fashion and try to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. And uh, I'm trying to slow my tone down here because my mother always says I talk too fast, even though she used to beg me to go do radio or do anything related to this, um, which I got to give her props on that. Thank you for pushing me to do this, mom. Regardless who listens or not, it's almost like, I'm not going to say they're rants or venting, but I'm going to be obviously in the future interviewing a lot of different people because I, I love interesting people and I love being around people and I love helping people. So that's really what it's about. So yeah. And like I just mentioned, you can find me on the YouTube page, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram too. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I got to go meet my daughter for uh, dinner. All right. Take care and I wish you nothing but the best. And if you're traveling, safe travels.